Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to install your Intel Arc B580 graphics card into your new system. So this video is going to cover how to install the graphics card, both physically and also things in the BIOS you want to take a look at, and also things potentially in Windows you want to take a look at, and also how to install the latest drivers and all that kind of good stuff. So if you've just bought your first Intel Arc graphics card and you've got the B580, this is going to be a pretty useful video to you. So the first thing you want to do is on your computer, if it's a brand new computer and you've just installed Windows, you probably don't need to do DDU. But if you have had a previous graphics card in your system, such as one from either AMD or NVIDIA, it's really worth running DDU, which is the Display Driver Uninstaller. I'm not going to go through it on this particular instance because I don't need to because I've not installed any other systems on this computer. So it's absolutely fine, but I will put a link in the video description so if you want to go and see how DDU works in an in-depth way, then you can certainly check out that video. But for the rest of you, you're going to want to see how to get this installed, how to physically insert it, power plugs, etc, etc. So let's get started and uh, we'll go ahead over to the computer and start stripping it down. Okay, so to start with, we're going to take a look at our PCI Express blanking plates. Now, on your particular system, you may have a slightly different layout, but in this system, it's just unscrew this side section, and this comes off or moves out of the way so you can gain access to the screws on the side there. On some, you may need to actually physically bend these out of the case. Uh, in this instance, we did have to do that, so they bend, bend them a few times, and then the metal fractures and they pop out. Alternatively, you might have ones which slot in, so just pull two out because this is a two slot card. Obviously, if you've got a slightly different version, it's a three slot, then you'll want to take out three. In order to work out which ones you need to actually remove, if you turn the PC round onto the other side and look at your graphics card slot, which is the top one here on your motherboard. So if you just move your finger along and then you can see which ports need removing. So for a two slot card, you take the one at the top, which is next to your GPU, and also the one below it. If you've got a triple slot card, then you take out the next one below, etc., etc. So that is pretty much it. Also, what you want to do is to fish out the cable from your power supply to actually power the graphics card. Now, this particular graphics card needs a single 8-pin PCIe connection, so let's fish one of those out from the back of the PC. So in this PC, the uh, wiring isn't the neatest, but it's actually quite handy because this is making it easier to show you. So off of our power supply, we will take this cable here, and you'll notice, or at least hopefully on yours, you have six pins plus two, which are kind of put together. And sometimes you may find that it actually says uh, GPU or PCIe actually on the plugs themselves. So they just go together. That one, you can just about see it's got PCIe written on it. So yeah, that is the cables you want. You'll need one of those. Uh, most of them have kind of pigtails, but you can pass both through. So take your cable and pass this through your chassis to the inside so you can connect it to your graphics card. So you can take your GPU out of the box and uh, admire it. Also on the bottom, there'll be a little uh, plastic strip there. Pull that off and that will expose the PCI Express contact strips. Also on some cards, you may have these as well. These little plastic blanks, which sometimes actually get in the way when you're installing the graphics card, making it hard to put into the PCI Express slot. So I'm going to take all of those out now. Just pull those out. They're just either rubber or plastic. And that will reveal the actual monitor output points. So once you've got that, you can get ready to put your GPU into the computer. So depending on your motherboard, you may have a motherboard which has a PCI Express section like this, which is on a toggle switch. So you press this and this slot opens and closes. So that is in the open position. Press it again, it's in the closed position. Alternatively, you might have one which has a little bit of plastic, which you have to depress. So if you do have that, just push it so it's in the down position. And then when you push the graphics card in, the force of the graphics card go in will push the plastic back out again. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we can get the graphics card kind of lined up. So if you grab it underneath and support yourself on the top of the system and just gently aim towards that graphics card slot, lining up the two slots at the back at the same time, and you should find it wiggles in. On some systems, you'll find that it's going to kind of snap into place, but because of this has got the release latch, it won't. So if I change that, and that's going to hold it in place. Now, it will be a little bit saggy in there, it will move around. So what you want to do 
is actually on the side of the system. You want to screw in two screws to hold it in place. Generally, those screws will come with the case. Just give you a close up of that so you can see where the screws go in. So what you want to do is just lift up the GPU very slightly and then you can get the screw started into the case and just kind of do up one reasonably tight, not overly tight, just so it's held in position. And then do the one above it. You can do this the other way around if you want to, it's entirely up to you really. But just make sure you lift the card up a little bit whilst you're doing it or after you've done it, just so that the slots on the back line up correctly. And once you've done one up tight, you can do the other one. Don't do them overly tight because you might strip the threads. And once you're happy that's lined up, you can then close this section back down. And on this particular one, got a little screw there to hold things in place. There we go. So you should be able to see from the back, turn this around a little bit more. You should be able to see that all of your ports on the back here are easily accessible and not overly kind of covered by this metal bar above. Otherwise you'll find when you plug in your graphics card, this metal will actually stop your GPU from making full contact. So do be wary of that depending on what case you've got. Sometimes you may even have to remove this bar just so you can get your graphics card to actually connect to your monitor. So do bear that in mind. If it doesn't go in all the way, you won't get a signal. So yeah, that is pretty important. So the next thing which is pretty important is connecting up the power. So let's do that next. Okay, for the next bit is the power supply. So as you can see, we've got our cable, which I've tucked through from the bottom there. And what we'll do is make sure that is firmly together, the two pins on there. Yours might be a solid eight pin, so if it is, don't worry too much. And take advantage of the opening at the bottom there. That is where the clip is gonna end up going. So this will physically only fit in in one direction. So I'll stretch that across there a little bit and line that up and just push it in until it clicks. If it doesn't click, just give it a little wiggle. Just make sure that it's firmly seated and doesn't want to come back out. If you just get a wiggle and lightly pull on it, just make sure that it's in and that is pretty much it. You can obviously wire this however you want to to make it look nice and neat and tidy. Um, I'm just showing you this for demonstration purposes. Obviously. You can as well also use white cable extensions. I'll put some links in the video description for white adapters. So if you want to use any cable extensions on there, you can do it, they're pretty cheap to get. Uh, and potentially if you've got a white build, make it look nicer. Although they don't really do these cards in white other than the ASRock one. Anyway, I digress. So that is actually it installed. So now we can head over to the computer. And what we'll do is we'll go straight away into the BIOS by pressing the delete key on this particular motherboard. And I'll show you some of the important settings to change in there. Okay, so we've entered the BIOS, and this BIOS may look slightly different from yours, but the principles are essentially going to be the same, so don't worry too much about that. Now, what you want to look for is two things, so a resizable bar or smart access memory, either one of those. So you can click on the search and just type in either resizable, is that going to be there? Yeah, resizable bar support there. We've got it down at the bottom. So just look for a resizable bar support, make sure that is enabled. And also if you've got the option for above 4G decoding. So I'll look, see if we've got that above. That doesn't seem to be in there. Let's try 4G. Some motherboards have this enabled as a default and it's not even in the boss anymore. So yeah, don't worry about that too much. Uh, the other one is gonna be the ASPM. So this is part of power management. So what if I press the right buttons? So there we go, ASPM. So in your motherboard, you'll have somewhere in here an option for native ASPM. Generally, it's gonna be set to disabled. So you wanna set that to enabled. And what that means is that the operating system is controlling the ASPM, which is a power management feature. And also you want to change this one as well, PCI Express root port one. You may have an option for root port zero also. Uh, root port zero is normally the onboard graphics, Root port one is normally the discrete graphics or your graphics card slot. If it's not entirely accurate, check with your motherboard vendor or manufacturer and you should find out which one is the correct setting. But for us, it's gonna be this one. So make sure this is set to L1 and that the operating system controlled ASPM is set to enabled. So once you've done all that, you can close your windows down and then you can do save and exit. So do exit, you wanna 
save configuration yet. Yeah, I've already changed mine, so I'm not making any changes, but yours will probably give you some changes which have been made. So once that's done, press yes, and then we can go ahead and boot into Windows for the first time with our new graphics card. Okay, so we're back into our Windows desktop, and yeah, you can see all the pop-ups are starting. So you'll probably find when you go in for the first time, your uh, resolution is going to look uh, pretty messed up. Let's get rid of that. We don't want that anymore. And yeah, this is basically what uh, what it's going to be like. So what you want to do is to install the correct drivers. There's various ways you can do it. If you're on an Intel system already, and you've actually got the Intel driver installer, which could be down here. So the Intel driver and support assistant. It says there's three updates available, one of which is going to be the graphics driver. So we could do it that way if we wanted to. Or if you've got Intel graphics software installed, then you can do it from there. But if you haven't got any of it at all, which is what I'm going to be kind of assuming that you are in that position, we'll head over to Chrome. And we don't want to do any of that. And all we want to do is just type in Intel graphics driver. There you go. And press enter. And you'll get somewhere like this. So the download center. So we can go to there. Yeah, allow cookies, etc. So you can do automatically update your drivers and software. That's one way of doing it. Or alternatively, you can go over to graphics. And then it will come up to the top one. So Intel Arc and Iris XE graphics for Windows. So this will be the latest version. You can see by the date there. So that's the 2nd of January, 2025. And we're currently on the 10th, so it's only about eight or nine days old. So I think that's the one we're gonna go for. So we'll click on download and that will start downloading. It's actually quite a big download, to be fair. The uh, the driver package has got quite bloated, unfortunately, for Intel. But just let it continue. And uh, when it's done, we'll go to our downloads folder. Okay, so that's downloaded. So we'll click on that folder there, which is our downloads. And we've got our Intel graphics. So we can just double click on that one. And it will start extracting the folder. It does take a while actually, because it is like one and a half gig size driver for some bizarre reason. Okay, so user account controls on the come up. So you have to click on yes. And then it'll start the graphics driver installer. You can close down the windows in the background if you wish as well at the time. Uh, so now you can begin installation and it will collect the data about the devices which are actually installed in your system. Potentially, if you're on an Intel-based system as well, then it might pick up the onboard graphics as well, which is built into your processor, should it have it, and should it be enabled in the BIOS. And it will also install the drivers for that as well. And you have to agree to the licensing, and you get the option here. So if you want to just do the, the standard deal, you can just click on Start, and it will go ahead and do all that. If you want to customize it, you can do this, so you can install just the graphics driver itself. Uh, you can choose to not install the graphics software. That is up to you. And also you've got the option for the sub driver support assistant if you wanted to, and also the computing improvement program. Also, you can choose to do a clean installation. If you're a little bit concerned that you've had a Intel graphics card in previously and you want to clear the drivers out, then you can go ahead and choose that. But for most people, just choosing the graphics driver and the Intel graphics software should be more than enough. I will say at this point, due to the nature of the current CPU overhead for the drivers, it potentially might be something actually in the Intel graphics software. So you might be better off just installing the graphics driver alone. But in this instance, I'm going to install the graphics software as well, as most people will want to use that at some point. But potentially it could be slowing down your system more than it otherwise would normally. But we don't know at the moment. It's pretty much an unknown so it's changed our resolution, as you can see, quite dramatically there. So we've popped back up to 4K from 1080p. And of course, the uh, the scaling is considerably off, but we can change that once the uh, driver is done. You may also get a message come up saying about your audio device has changed if you're using the HDMI or DisplayPort audio. Okay, so there you go. Installation is complete and the driver was successful. You also got the option to launch the Intel graphics software. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. And it does say that a reboot is recommended, but you can just click on finish. So at this point, you're pretty much ready to go and you can carry on playing your games, etc. But before you do that, it's worth making some setting changes. If we go into hardware monitor and we look at the GPU idle wattage, 
it may be a little bit on the high side. Right, so we've got two options here for Intel graphics. So we'll close that one just to not confuse things. So there's our Intel Arc TM B580 graphics. And currently the GPU idle is actually pretty decent. So we're down to about uh, 18 watts on a 4K desktop, which is okay. Potentially we might be able to get it a little bit lower than that. Um, the minimum apparently was 7 watts, but I don't believe that for a minute. I think 18 watts is about right for the resolution we're at. But what you can do if you go into power, so we'll just type in power from the start menu and go into uh, edit power plan and choose advanced power settings. If we go into the PCI Express section and we go into link state power management, what we can do is actually change this to yeah, maximum power savings. I had to double read that. I thought it meant maximum power. No, maximum power savings. That's the important bit. So if you do that, click apply. We may need to do a reboot, but it may actually reflect already. And yeah, it does. So now we're down to, yeah, about seven watts. So potentially you can save yourself a little bit of wattage there, down to five watts. That's incredibly good. So I think this is my new favorite GPU. That's really low. I wasn't expecting that. So anyway, there you go. If you want to get your GPU usage down with your Intel Arc graphics, this is the setting you want to change. But it does reflect what is done in the BIOS earlier. So you have to do the ASPM settings in the BIOS. So you do have to do the ASPM settings in the BIOS to start with. Otherwise the settings in Windows won't take effect because you have to hand over control of the power management to Windows. Yeah, bizarrely, Windows is actually better. So yeah, that's pretty good. Down to about five or six watts. I'm very happy with that as a GPU idle, of course. Um, let me know what your experience is in the comments and uh, that should be it for installing your Intel Arc B580 GPU. So there we go, there is our Intel Arc B580 GPU fully installed and also our power savings configured as well. That's a very, very good idle. Much better than we had with the original Arc Alchemist series, which was about 40 watts, bizarrely, on the desktop. But anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.